Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our Master Seller webinar on security from the ground up. My name is Michelle Lasowski. I'm a Partner Marketing Manager for the Google Apps Reseller Program. And I'm excited to be joined today by Aaron Feigenbaum. Uh, Aaron is our Director of Security for Google Enterprise and he's going to be walking you through today's presentation and discussing how Google keeps your data secure. Um, as usual, I encourage everyone to ask questions and we're doing something a little bit differently today. We're going to be taking all of our security questions using Google Moderator. So on the opening slide here, you should be able to see the link, um, shortlinks.getportal.com slash app security questions. If you go to that link, you're going to be able to ask all your security questions and vote on the ones you like best. The ones that get the most votes are going to float to the top, and what that's going to allow Aaron to do is focus on the questions that everyone is most interested in. Um, so again, please put all your questions uh, your security questions using Google Moderator. We're going to keep Google Moderator open for about 25 minutes, which is about how long it's going to take Aaron to get through his slides. Uh, and then at that point, we'll close Google Moderator and Aaron will start Q&A. Um, we do have the, we are manning the chat boxes. If you have any other questions, uh, please be sure to put them in the Q&A box in the bottom right corner of your WebEx screen. But for anything security related, use Google Moderator. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Aaron. Aaron, you should have control of the slides. Great. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, so today we're going to talk about security. Uh, cloud computing security has been touted as one of the uh, reasons people are uncomfortable with, uh, with the cloud. And in general, I'm going to say something that uh, may be a little bit controversial, and hopefully you'll, you'll get that uh, throughout the presentation today, that I assert that cloud computing security and specifically Google Apps can be as secure, if not more secure, than what most organizations do today. So companies basically have two choices where they want to put their data and combinations of these. So the traditional environment uh, where it's placed on company servers uh, in your data center or a data center managed by somebody else, uh, and all the care and feeding for those servers, all the maintenance, the patches, the upgrades, etc., is performed by your organization in the traditional manner that we understand uh, very well today. And this new model or newer model, the cloud, where it may appear to be a little bit more nebulous, um, and hopefully we'll take out that nebulousness, uh, from where that data is actually stored. And that data, while it may not be on your server, you may not even know which exact server it's on, can be accessed from any time, anywhere, using any internet connected device. It's really a changing of the mindset. A lot of people are concerned about security, and also a lot of people when they compare Google Apps security or cloud application security, they're comparing it to a 100% secure, a euphoric state. And I assert that there is no 100% secure system, right? And if you talk to some computer scientists and the security researchers, they'll tell you that, you know, the only way to get a 100% secure system is to take a computer, uh, put it in a locked room with no wires in or out, and even then some of the technologies have access to, uh, to that machine. But I think it is much better than what we're doing today in the traditional world. And it's a changing of the mindset in the sense that 100 years ago, we used to all protect our money by keeping it ourselves. We would hide it underneath the mattress. We would come home every night and make sure that that money was still there. And that gave us a sense of security. And then with the advent of banks, the banks would take your money and just give you a small piece of paper. But the banks have the economies of scale. 
they had the armed guards, they had the video surveillance, they had the big thick safes. So they could actually do a better job at protecting your money. And then about 20 years ago, when ATM machines came around, people said, what, to put a machine on the street that spits money onto the sidewalk? That will never catch on. That's not secure. And look at them today. They're ubiquitous. So we've been able to change the mindset of how we treat and protect money and how we can have access to it anytime, anywhere. Similar analogy uh, is with data. I spend about a third of my time talking to clients, the major uh, Fortune 500, as well as some of our small and medium businesses, and want to understand what their concerns are with security, both with the cloud and with their traditional model. And there's a couple of themes that come out when I, when I talk to them. The first problem that they have with their current model is where the data resides. When I was a chief security officer, before joining Google, I was a chief security officer of a major financial services company, I had a saying. I said, make it easy for users to do the right thing, and they tend to. Right? So if we make it easy for users to enable sharing, uh, enabling working when they want to, enable security to be invisible, they will do it. But if we put extra steps in front of them that they have to do, click on some extra buttons, go through some additional processes, most time they will circumvent that. So one of the issues that they have with the current environment is where the data is. Users want to work anytime they want to, from when any place they want. And what that means is that means a lot of the data in the traditional environment is sitting on laptops and PC. According to some of the statistics, 66%, I'm sorry, 60% of corporate data is residing on PCs that are unprotected or laptops. One out of every 10 laptops will be lost or stolen within 12 months of purchase. There are over 2 million laptops lost um, or stolen in the United States in 2008 alone. Those USB keys that we find so convenient to use and take data with us 66% of us admit to losing them, with 60% of that having corporate private data. So it's not users trying to do wrong things or be malicious, but they're taking the data with them so they can work at home. They're burning it on to CD and DVD. And once they've done that, a corporation's lost all control of that data. I can open up the newspaper in the United States almost every day and find an example of a name brand organization that has had such a silly security incident happen and become highly publicized. Somebody took data, put it on their home PC, their house was broken into, or they put data on a DVD and left it in their car. If you put that data in the cloud, you can access it anytime, anywhere, without it having to reside on your PC, on a USB key, on a laptop. It's obvious to you now that I'm delivering this presentation to you from the cloud because you're all on WebEx, but this presentation actually was never stored on my laptop. I created this presentation. I shared the link with it in Google Apps to our PR folks and our legal folks and our marketing folks. They reviewed, made some comments. I then shared it with Michelle. 
I am accessing it today from a different PC than the one I created it with. And, I, and I'll probably access it tomorrow from a, a, a completely different PC. Again, all from anytime, anywhere, without it residing anyplace. The second problem that security officers tell me is really tough and they're spending a lot of money on that they feel is wasted is the patching problem. Security has become an arms race, a competition of who is faster, the hackers, the crackers, the tigers, lions, and bears, or companies. Software vendors all release security patches on a regular basis. Some at an ad hoc basis, and some on a regular monthly calendar basis. It's an organization's responsibility to consume those patches, to understand if that patch the software vendor released is applicable to your environment, to test it on all the variations and flavors of that applications or that operating system or that user repository, and then get that deployed. And do that all before the bad guys reverse engineer this patch and figure out how to expose that vulnerability. According to statistics, companies take between 25 to 60 days to deploy a security patch after it's been released. That's 25 to 60 days that you're vulnerable to a known security vulnerability. The CIOs and CISOs that I talk to say they wish they were this fast, but they're more close to three to six months to deploy a patch, especially if it's an application patch. That's really, really scary. And while you're working on deploying these patches, the bad guys are also not only trying to expose and, and use these vulnerabilities that are known, but find new vulnerabilities that haven't been patched. This problem completely goes away when you move into the cloud because you have no more servers to patch. Now, what you can say is this becomes the cloud provider's problem, right? Because now the cloud provider has servers that my data is sitting on, and how do I know that I'm just not giving this problem over to them, and how do I know that they're doing a good job at that? And let's uh, let's start talking about that. So, once you're giving over your data to a cloud provider, and specifically to Google and in Google Apps, you need to understand and be comforted that somebody is obviously making sure your data is secure, making sure that we protect the confidentiality, the integrity, and the availability of your data. And when we think about security, we think about it in terms of people, process, and technology. And let's talk a little bit about each one of those three. So people. We have over 100 people focused on security of our customers' data. We've hired some of the world's foremost security experts working on managing today's threats and understanding what the emerging threats are and making sure that our customers' data is protected about that. People that have done very interesting research and released those research to the world about malware or browser security. And if you haven't... Uh, uh, read the browser security handbook that uh, that we released, uh, I guess about six months ago. I, I, I recommend uh, reading that. It's a good uh, a good read as well. Every Googler goes through security training, so they understand their responsibilities around securing customer data. Uh, security and privacy 
of our customers' data is paramount to our success, so much that we've put it in our code of conduct, which is publicly available on the web for anybody to read. Uh, so if you're interested, go and, and just Google search, uh, Google code of conduct, and you can see how security is part of that. From a process perspective, most of the products and technology that enterprises use today did not have security set up from the get-go. Right? The applications we use did not have security designed from the get-go. Even the Internet did not have security designed from the beginning. It was all an afterthought. One of the benefits of being an Internet company born and raised in the Internet is being able to put security as part of our core DNA and having security baked in from the beginning and not just an afterthought to before the product ships. Imagine that you would not design a car by putting an airbag today as one of the last steps. But if you wanted to design a car that was safe and secure, the airbag would be part of the initial design and build all around it. The same is true with, uh, with Google Apps. And that's exhibited through all the processes that we have in managing the environment, in building secure code, and making sure that we have different checkpoints throughout the build process of, um, of security, as well as not just taking our word for it. But we have external audits um, where we just finished our third SAS 70 on Google Apps, which means that an independent auditor has come and reviewed the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of uh, the entire environment that composes Google Apps from the data centers um, to the code building process uh, to the operations, et cetera and has given a favorable opinion that we have sufficient controls and that they are working as intended. We also announced that we are doing our FISMA certification, uh, and we'll have that done within the next couple months. For those of you who are not familiar, FISMA is the Federal uh, Information Security um, Management Act, which is based on NIST 853, um, controls, which has about 250 some controls uh, that we're going and benchmarking ourselves against each one of those controls and then have an independent tester come and verify that we do meet each one of those controls. Uh, and and uh, the SAS 70 was a type 2. Um, the difference between a type 1, we did a type 1 first and now we, and then the second one, we did a type 2, and now we just complete our third type 2. The type 2 means that they're um, functioning effectively over a duration of time and not just at a point of time. And probably one of the most interesting aspects is the technology that we use. According to Gartner, Google is the fourth largest server manufacturer in the world. After IBM, HP, and Dell comes Google. We build our own hardware. We write our own BIOS. We design our own chips. Um, it's on a heavily modified Linux-based operating system that's been modified and tailored to meet our needs. And this gives us a tremendous benefit from a security perspective. You see the snowflakes on here because of the homogeneity. As opposed to the traditional environment where everything is unique and every different server is slightly different in most traditional environments, we have one image. And all of our servers look like that image, which gives us a tremendous advantage because when it is time to 
patch or upgrade, we can do it in a uniform, rapid manner. It also offers great advantages in troubleshooting because you have now just one image that you have to manage uh, and, and can tell what's going on in your environment. Also, our data centers are very unique. And if you haven't done so, I recommend going to YouTube and typing in Google Data Center, uh, and you can see a tour of one of our data centers. Our data centers probably don't look like what you think a typical technology data center uh, looks like. Nor do our servers, and you can see what, uh, what those servers look like on that video. One of the other tremendous benefits that we have is replication. So we replicate customer's data multiple times, both within a single data center and in multiple data center. This means that we can have zero scheduled downtime. So most organizations in a traditional environment have to schedule some kind of monthly downtime at least, right, to update patches, to do server maintenance, et cetera. Because we are serving and have real-time replication across multiple data centers, we can provide our users with high availability because we can take an entire data center offline and serve users from their secondary data center without them even knowing that we're doing maintenance on their primary data center. And as you guys know, we have an SLA for Google Apps of 99.9%, .9 and we aspire to, uh, to much, uh, much higher um, than that. Also, the way we store data is very different than the traditional environment. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that if you want more details. Again, go onto the web and download the GFS um, white paper, the Google File System white paper. In the traditional environment, um, and I'll pick on mail for example, if I was using a mail server, all of my mail would be sitting on that mail server. And Michelle, because she works with me, um, her mail would probably be sitting next to my mail on that same mail server. And if we needed to, we would replicate that for redundancy or availability perspective. As opposed to doing that, we've taken a very, very different approach. We've chunked out users' data. So as opposed to having a single server that's dedicated to you that all your mail sits on, you're data is now chunked into small pieces and spread across our environment. And each one of those chunks is replicated multiple times. Multiple times, again, within a single data center, and then multiple times in a secondary data center. That means my chunk is now not sitting next to Michelle's chunk anymore. Michelle's chunks are sitting someplace else, which are sitting next to other enterprise customers, which are sitting next to consumer users, and is also sitting next to even Google's own um, email because we rely on this system to, uh, uh, to, to run our business as well. This means an attack is a lot harder because now trying to find a specific user's server is like trying to find a needle in a haystack trying to understand which server has a chunk among many, many servers is much difficult. And trying to find an entire user's inbox becomes practically impossible. It's almost like trying to find a needle that's been chopped up into lots of pieces and buried in a haystack. The other part that we take very serious is media disposal and our disk management process. So each one of our disks is assigned a barcode. 
uh, some very similar to what you'd find in a, in a store. And we scan each one of those barcodes. So we know where each disk is at any given point in time. I know who put it there, when it was put there, when it was removed, etc. From a network perspective, we have a really tight control of our perimeter using concepts like default deny and defense in depth to ensure the security of our environment. So again, just a little tidbit about the technology that we use um, to, protect, uh, to protect our customers' data. One of the tough questions, and probably one of the really tough questions I get um, is, so who can read my data? In the typical environment where it's stored on my premise in the traditional world, companies kind of have a good understanding or they think they have a good understanding who can do that. Uh, they know who their admins are. They've hired them. So they feel, right or wrongfully so, that they know who can read their data. When going into a cloud in Google Apps, some companies feel a little more insecure about that, and they need to understand who can read their data. Again, it is our policy um, for Google Apps that customers' data belongs to their customer. It is not Google's data. And we will only access that data as needed to provide the services or troubleshoot for those users. In every to any environment, you have to trust, and this is in the traditional world, in a cloud world, in outsourcing, etc. You have to trust a small set of users or of admins and give them the quote unquote keys to access users' data. The same is true in a cloud environment, and the same is true in Google Apps. Right? So we have to trust a small set of users to keep the systems up and going, and with that comes some sort of access to data. It is our policy to limit that access based on roles. Right? So we only give that access to very trusted individuals that need that access to do their job. And we practice role-based security and least privileged access, which means the least amount of access they need to get that role done. And we review on a regular basis those people to make sure that that list is as small and as accurate as possible. And then we also say there is no privacy in viewing customers' data. When a support person has to view somebody's data in part of a support issue, right, our tools capture and log that access um, to indicate that, a, that somebody did that. So we have a record uh, showing, and that user knows that there's a record showing of that access. So why should you trust Google? Well, trust is key and paramount to our business. We're an internet company born and raised in the internet, and we work every day to earn the trust of our users to ensure that we're protecting the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of our customers' data. We have a strong history of advocating for user privacy. Our privacy policies uh, are up there for, for anybody to read. Um, and we store our own data in the same environment with the same controls, and we are users running the same systems the same way customers are uh, that trust us with their data, putting it in, uh, in Google Apps.
So this was one of more to come um, discussions about security. I, I think you're going to start seeing a lot more conversations, uh, a lot more material coming out from us about, uh, about security. Uh, we also update uh, the security site uh, that we have uh, for apps. Um, there's a, a short video on there as well, as well as a link to some of the security uh, frequently asked questions. But I'll also stay tuned to, uh, to see more things coming up uh, in the future. So with that said, I'm going to uh, tackle some of the questions in uh, Google Moderator. If, uh, if you have more questions, please... Uh, uh, Please, uh, please, please put them in there. Um, so the first question here is: If an unpredictable failure caused Google to lose your saved email, can it be recovered with data saved uh, with Gears? Can this done, be done by uh, by the user? Is there a backup that can be done by, on the user's computer, etc.? So a couple things. First of all, we worked very hard not to lose users' data. Uh, I am not familiar of an incident where we've lost uh, users' data, and one of the reasons we can do that is because of the multiple replications that we have and the various controls that we've put in, again, a user's data as opposed to the traditional environment where it might be stored in one data center and then may have some kind of recoverable secondary data center that gets replicated. Uh, we actually have taken a different approach. Um, designing redundancy from the software layer all the way up the stack and having multiple copies. With that said, we've also announced about two months ago the Data Liberation Front. And you can go to dataliberation.org, I believe is, is the URL, um, where we have a team of engineers uh, working on each one of our products to ensure that users can take their data with them at any given point in time. We want you to use our products and services because they're the best, because users like them, because they get the job done, they're, they're, uh, they have the features that they need, et cetera, and they're secure. But we also feel that users should not be locked in to our products. And with that said, the data liberation means we are liberating your data. We've given you various different tools and methods, depending on the type of product, to take that data with you. And that would be also a way to back up, uh, back up uh, users' data if they uh, feel so inclined to do so. The next question was around access to, uh, to documents and calendars. Um, Again, I think I addressed that, uh, that we have a small group of people that we protect by, uh, um, by role, uh, that uh, they, they sign additional agreements. Uh, they've gone through all our in-depth background checks um, to, uh, to get that job, uh, and we review that access as well as audit, uh, audit what they do on a regular basis. The next, steps, the next question was around government access to information under what terms. Um, Google is a U.S. company. We are subject uh, to, uh, to U.S. laws. We're, we're law-abiding. Um, you know, with, with that said, we, we have a, a long history of, uh, of advocating for users' uh, users privacy. Uh, and, and maintaining the integrity of that privacy of that data. With Google Apps, uh, it's a little different. The privacy policy, you'll see different privacy policies for Google Apps for enterprise as opposed to the consumer because in apps, the, there is a domain as opposed to in the consumer where the domain administrator has the ability to retrieve that data and respond to such a subpoena or a request by government. So it is our policy to notify um, organizations if there is a request when legally possible uh, to notify companies that there is a request for their data. And again, that's our public policy. It's stated in a security fact. Um, and. Uh, and I don't think there's more I can say about that. 
Um, what kind of supporting information does Google release regarding their security practice SAS 70 disaster recovery planning? So security and defense in depth works, obviously, if uh, you need to balance the amount of information that you disclose about security and not uh, revealing uh, the keys to the kingdom and, uh, and, and the blueprints, obviously, because uh, that would be a security vulnerability, uh, as well as balancing that with customers' understanding of how you protect their data. With that said, we have the apps uh, security site um, with, uh, with some information about, uh, about that. Um, disaster recovery is actually part of our, our SAS 70. Um, we do regular drills to ensure that uh, um, uh, we, we are capable of uh, recovering from a disaster, and part of that is baked into the technology, again, by having the redundancy and storing data in multiple different data centers. Uh, and again, keep an eye and expect to see more and more information released about, uh, about our security. Um, can an unsecured computer, such as a computer that you don't know or is in a public place uh, with Google Apps, uh, can you use that without security risk? Uh, no. I mean, obviously, if you're using a, uh, a computer you don't trust, uh, there can be malware on there. There can be things such as uh, key loggers. Um, I'm not familiar with m many technologies around that. If you have something that, uh, that, that captures your keystroke, somebody can uh, grab your password. Uh, and, and then use that at a, at a later time. So I think it's just good uh, computer manners to know which computers you're using and be very cautious when you're using uh, uh, things like uh, like a kiosk that, that you may not know what's uh, what's installed on there. With regards to the T-Mobile Microsoft uh, danger crash. Um, about data loss, uh, how, how do we make sure that, uh, that that similar occurrence can't happen? Um, I can't comment specifically about the the T-Mobile Microsoft danger. Uh, again, uh, in Google Apps, we go uh, we, we we take customer data and making sure the availability of customer data is uh, is, is very important. And because of that, uh, hence the multiple copies and redundancies and different controls, both in, from a technology perspective as well as from a process perspective, making sure that the, our change control process is followed to try to avoid and eliminate any, uh, any type of, type of uh, similar uh, concerns. I think it's also important when you think about the, the Microsoft uh, danger um, thing is Cloud computing is a technology, it is a service, and just because something happens bad to one vendor um, should not uh, reflect uh, really on, on everybody in that space, right? Uh, I, I don't know anything about Microsoft's and T-Mobile's security practices, what processes they have in place, what uh, contingencies they've put in place to ensure uh, um, Ensure things like that don't happen in the future. I can only talk about Google Apps, and, and I think we've done we've done things the right way. Are there any plans for multi-factor authentication? Something you know and something you have. Our current uh, our, our current offering is around um, SAML, uh, so we provide two ways to authenticate into Google Apps: uh, the basic authentication. Uh, where uh, Google stores uh, your username and a, a salted hash of your password so you can authenticate directly into uh, Google Apps. And another option is SAML, uh, where we have a fair amount of customers using that to use two-factor authentication, uh, both uh, on their own systems, such as RSA secure IDs, certificates, 
uh, as well as we've announced a fair amount of partners in the Google Apps Marketplace. Um, XKey, YubiKey, uh, TrueSecure, etc. that that offer a multi-factor authentication uh, into Google Apps. So I think if you're something that you're concerned about, uh, and obviously multi-factor is um, a, a way to uh, combat some of the threats around uh, password guessing, um, sharing, snooping, et cetera. There is talk about Google providing their data center architecture to be installed within the government data center. Can I elaborate on that? I think that's a little inaccurate. What we've announced is building a government cloud um, separately to house government data. Um, so we are getting FISMA certification for our current infrastructure. Uh, that is the infrastructure that everybody uses, um, all of our enterprise customers, as well as our government uh, clients. Our, our government clients have expressed interest in some additional features that, that are, and, and benefits that, uh, that our enterprise customers aren't as concerned about. And because of that, as part of this uh, new administration's uh, GovCloud initiative, we've announced our own GovCloud initiative uh, where we are um, building a separate infrastructure uh, for federal and, uh, and state customers. Um, looking here through the questions, I think we've hit, hit most of these. See if anything else comes in. Hey guys, well I appreciate your time. Uh, I'll hand it back to Michelle. Uh, again, if there's uh, uh, additional questions, put them on on moderator. Uh, check check out those uh, those links I recommended, and stay tuned for additional information uh, coming in the near future. Uh, even more details about uh, about our security in forms of uh, white papers, webcasts, and other materials. Thanks, Aaron. We really appreciate you taking time. I know you're super busy this week. Um, for everyone who is on right now and for those who missed it, we are going to be posting a recording of the webinar and the presentation on the solution provider site by the end of today. And we'll follow up with everyone via email to give you a link to that. Um, you can also continue to access the Google Moderator questions if you just kind of want to reference the questions that Aaron answered. Um, so I think that's it. Um, thank you again, Aaron. Appreciate you taking the time. Hope everyone has a good rest of the week.